wonderful day that will be when our Jesus I shall see. I'm looking forward to that day this morning. I can't wait for that day to arrive. The Bible says, look up for your redemption draweth nigh. I'm glad Amen. one day after a while, he that shall come will come and will not tarry. We shall all be called together to meet him in the air, those that are saved. And I trust and pray that you're saved this morning. It's good to be in the house of God on this beautiful Sunday morning. We're looking forward to the service this morning. We've been blessed by being here already. And it's good to see this good number out here this morning. We have a card this morning I want to read. I've been meaning to read it for a couple of weeks now, but it says to Friendship Baptist Church, with warmest thanks for all your help. Thank you for the monetary gift. It was greatly appreciated. Also, thanks for your prayers. When I had surgery, love, Tim Taylor. That you keep on praying for him in the days ahead. And pray for all those around here that have needs, those that are sick, those that are afflicted, those that's lost loved ones this week. There's many around about this community and around about uh, this county that's lost loved ones this week that we've heard about. And you pray for those up and lift, lift, lift those names up to the Lord in prayer, those families, you pray for them. And I pray for the service this morning. Pray for Brother Carl. He's out this morning just precautionary. He's at home. He's still recovering from his procedures. Good to have Brother LG and his family back today. And you continue to pray for Brother H.C. Scott and his wife that they would uh, get well soon. And uh, pray for the church around here that we would grow spiritually and in number. Amen. I'm looking for good things to happen in the days ahead. I'm excited about the days ahead. And uh, looking forward to see what the Lord's going to do for us around here. Anything from anybody this morning before we go to the Lord in prayer? If not, Brother Jerry Scott, would you pray for us this morning? Ask the Lord to help us in the service. Heavenly Father, we're thankful for this day. We're thankful for the privilege and opportunity to come out to your house and worship your perfect law of liberty, Lord. We yes, pray. God, help us. That you just uh, be with us in a mighty way here this morning. We're thankful for each one that's come this way, numbers and distance alike. Lord God, we pray that they'll be able to pray when they leave this blessing to be in the house of God. Lord, we pray for help for those who are in need, those oh, in yes. hospitals, Lord help nursing us. homes, Lord, those who have lost loved ones, especially. We pray that they'll lean on you for uh, guidance and spiritual help in uh, the, the time of grief that they're going through. The yes, Lord, grant it this morning. Lord, we pray that you just uh, provide healing for their bodies in a mighty way. Lord, be with Brother Mike as he stands before us this morning. God help us. Empower him and let him Bring to memory the things that he has studied. Let oh, yes. the Holy Spirit Lord, take control of this service here this morning. Lord, need they've help. moved from heart to heart and breast to breast. Lord, we pray that the, there's one that don't know you in the free pardon of sin this morning. Convict them that we brought upon them. They come to know you, of course, everlasting too yes. late. And Lord, we just love you. We appreciate everything that you do, what you've done, and what you're going to do. In Jesus' most precious name, amen. 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 Thank you, Brother Jerry.
good singing this morning. Brother Phil, would you pray with the offering for us after the Lord to help us? Man, good to be in the Lord's house this morning. I'm glad to be here. Thankful to be back with the people of God. Good to see you out here on this Sunday morning. The book of Luke, chapter number 7. The book of Luke, chapter number 7. That's what I'm going to read from this morning. The book of Luke, chapter number 7. And this is Luke's account of the gospel chapter number 7. Do ask that you pray for the service this morning, that the Lord will be lifted up in all things and would be glorified and magnified among us this morning. Luke chapter 7, if you would please stand when you find your place, if you're physically able and willing to do so. We'd invite you to stand with us while we read the Word of God. And you that know the worth of prayer, you pray for the preaching hour this morning, that the Lord would help us in the service. Luke chapter 7, verse 36, the Bible says, begin reading with verse 36, And one of the Pharisees desired him that he would eat with him. And he went into the Pharisee's house and sat down to meet. And behold, a woman in the city, which was a sinner, when she knew that Jesus sat at meat in the Pharisee's house, brought an alabaster box of ointment, and stood at his feet behind him weeping, and began to wash his feet with tears, and did wipe them with the hairs of her head, and kissed his feet, and anointed them with the ointment. Now when the Pharisee which had bidden him saw it, he spake within himself, saying, This man, if he were a prophet, would have known who and what manner of woman this is that toucheth him, for she is a sinner. And Jesus answering said unto him, Simon, I have somewhat to say unto thee. And he saith, Master, say on. There was a certain creditor which had two debtors, the one owed five hundred pence and the other fifty. And when they had nothing to pay, he frankly forgave them both. Tell me, therefore, which of them will love him most? Simon answered and said, I suppose that he to whom he forgave most. And he said unto him, Thou hast rightly judged. And he turned to the woman and said unto Simon, Seest thou this woman? I entered into thine house. Thou gavest me no water for my feet. But she hath washed my feet with tears and wiped them with the hairs of her head. Thou gavest me no kiss, but this woman, since the time I came in, hath not ceased to kiss my feet. My head with oil thou didst not anoint, but this woman hath anointed my feet with ointment. Wherefore I say unto thee, her sins, which are many, are forgiven. For she loved much, but to whom little is forgiven, the same loveth little. And he saith, and he said unto her, Thy sins are forgiven. And they, sat, and they that sat at meat with him began to say within themselves, Who is this that forgiveth sins also? And he said to the woman, Thy faith hath saved thee. Go in peace. You can be seated this morning. Thank you for standing with us while we read the word of God. When I look at this scripture this morning that we've read in your hearing, I tend to think about some things that have taken place here. We know that the Pharisees, they've desired the Lord to come and sit with them and eat with them. The Bible says he went into the Pharisee's house and sat down to meet. And there was a woman in the city which was a sinner. She came, she brought that alabaster box of ointment. She stood at his feet, she began to kiss his feet, she began to weep with great tears, and she washed his feet. 
with her tears and did wipe them with the hairs of her head. And I think about how she anointed the Lord with ointment. The Bible says here in verse 39 that the Pharisee which had bidden him saw it. And when he saw this thing, he said within himself, he said in his heart, he says, what manner of woman was, or this, this man, if he were a prophet, would have known who and what manner of woman this is that toucheth him, for she is a sinner. And so the Pharisee begins to think about Christ allowing this woman to touch him, being in the condition that she was in. She was a sinner. And the Bible says that when the Lord forgave her of her sin, the Lord spoke and said, Her sins, which are many, are forgiven. And I thought about this woman and how the Lord, He was willing to heal this woman because of her faith. This woman, the only reason she was healed is because of her faith. The only reason that you and I are saved this morning is because of our faith. We're not saved for any other reason than the, the fact that we have put our faith in the Lord Jesus Christ. We all have sin in our life. We all have done some terrible things. If we were to get a microscope and look at the heart and the mind of each one in this place this morning, we would be able to see that each of us deal with sin on a regular basis. And it's a lot of sin that we deal with. But the only reason that we're saved today is because of our faith. But I thought about the phrase that they said, This man, if he were a prophet, would have known who and what manner of woman this is that toucheth him, for she is a sinner. I thought about this woman, how, and I've said it before, the phrase, what manner of, means of an unknown kind. It means there's never been one like this woman. There's never been a sinner like this woman. And if this man were a prophet, he would know that all the sins in her life and he wouldn't let her anoint him and he wouldn't let her come and wash his feet with tears. He wouldn't even look, be around her. But I'm glad that the only thing that they could find bad to say about Christ was that he is gone to be guest with that that is a sinner. I'm glad that the Lord is a friend of sinners this morning. I'm glad that he was a friend to me one night when I was lost and in my sin and I had nowhere to go. He is a friend to sinners this morning and we better be glad that he did not leave us in the shape that we was in. But if you're saved, you're headed for a better place and you're saved and you're sealed into that day of redemption and you're sanctified, you're washed, you're regenerated in the blood of Jesus Christ. I'm glad that we live uh, today knowing that the Lord has saved us from our sin. But the Bible says what manner of woman this is that toucheth him, for she is a sinner. And certainly we could say the same thing about each one of us if we are honest about it. Paul, he said in, in the Bible, he said, I am chief of sinners. I believe if we were to have a debate this morning or take a poll, we would, we would all agree that ourselves are the worst of sinners. The sins that take place in our life, the unknown sins. He, he forgiveth sin and he pardons iniquity. That, that sin and that transgression, that iniquity, transgression I believe is the sin on the out, outside. I believe iniquity is sin on the inside. And I'm glad that the Lord, he, he knows our sins and he knows our needs this morning. There's never been one like the Lord Jesus Christ. When the Pharisees were trying to find reason to crucify the Lord, they said, Never a man spake like this man, and certainly there never has been one like the Lord Jesus Christ. I'm glad for that this morning. The book of Psalm, or the book of Isaiah, chapter number 40, in verse number 18, it says, To whom then will you liken God, or what likeness will you compare unto him? It is he that sitteth upon the circle of the earth. And it goes on to say in verse 25, To whom then will you liken me, or shall I be equal, saith the Holy One? I'd like to say this morning that there is nobody like the Lord Jesus Christ. There's nobody on this earth that you'll find better than the Lord Jesus Christ. He's a friend of sinners.